Hello, everybody. Gravy Train with another episode of Gravy Training. So I'm going to do some tips and tricks here. And in order to keep this as efficient and um, effective as possible, I'm going to dive right in. The first thing that I want to cover, and it's been asked by at least one or two people, is about the keybinds and what I've done for the keybinds. So uh, I have... Use, I use the standard WASD and whistle. Um, it's too efficient to be on space. There's no reason not to do that. The Autonautopedia, um, I mean, you can always just click on that, so I just unbound the key for that. Um, and then I use uh, the number keys, one, two, three, four. Well, I use one, two, four, three, technically. So one is going into edit mode, two is rotating, four is deleting because I want it to be the furthest over, and three is move. And the reason that I do them here instead of where they are, they default to over on like um, the V key for move and and uh, all the other stuff is I don't want to have to take my hand off the mouse or, or move my hand off the home keys to to come back or off a of WASD to to get to other places than the keyboard. I want this this is stuff I'm going to be doing all the time, so I want to have this stuff right there. Inventory isn't all that important, but um, so I just haven't changed that one, but backpack, move something up or down in your backpack. R and F, if your hands are on WASD, R and F, R, move up is just to the right of the WASD, and F is right below that, so it kind of makes sense, R and F. Stowing in the backpack, I keep that, um, I keep that one on Q, what it normally was, um, so I can just really quickly throw something into the backpack. But inventory swap, I put onto tab. So I can very quickly, just with my, my pinky tap up or, or my index or ring finger, just tap the tab key, and I'm swapping things back and forth. So those keys are right next to each other. So stowing something into the backpack or swapping something into the backpack is really, really simple. And then use held object as E. This is going to be something you're going to use fairly frequently. So um, like when I'm editing signs or, or doing any, uh, any of the other things like that, having that, um, that option right there is very nice. And then recenter and free cam. I don't use most of these other things. Um, so I didn't really make any adjustments to these. I mean, Free cam, I just pan around. I, I'm not worried about that so much. And recentering, I generally don't ever need to do. Um, and then accept. So that is what I have done for the keybinds. Um, and it works really well for me. It, it, the game's gotten simpler to, to manage and control since I've done this. So that is the first one. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So now I'm going to go in, and the next topic is going to be the choice of where you're going to land. So I'm going to be prepping a creative world here just so I can demonstrate a bunch of stuff. But I want to go over what I use when I am choosing where to land so that I can get the best possible start early on in the game. Because once you get, once you get established, it's easy enough to build roads and bots to handle things and, and you've got the resources to do stuff, what you really need is to accelerate that very early part of the game. So what I'm looking for, and this is actually a pretty darn good start. So I've got stone deposits here. I've got trace metal ore here. I've got trees. I've got access to sand. The important things that I want to have access to early game are going to be stone and trees and sand. Uh, so that's really what I'm aiming for. Um, and I want to have them probably within like a 3x3 three three grid, maybe at worst a 4x4 four four grid, but the bigger that gets, the more spread out it gets, the more you're going to have to to go out of your way to, to kind of be ready for it. So um, with the stone here, and this is not a bad spot to start, we've also got stone here. And we've got sand here, we've got some trees here, so this is not a bad start right here. The thing is, the thing to remember is you're not really constrained to wherever the flashing uh, marker is. So, because it's easy enough just to, to run to a new area to start and start building there, you're not really constrained by a certain spot. So, you want to pick a map that looks, that has the shape that you want. So, if you want a bunch of wide open areas or something like that, 
or if you like having a lot of ocean. I'm not really a big fan of the ocean being around. I mean, I, I don't. You can't get away from any all of it, but I don't want that much of my map to be ocean. And I like it to be kind of out of the way when I have the ocean. Like this isn't isn't bad because I've got a nice big area to build. This is my core of my city and spread out. And then looking in here once again, I can. We got stone here. Sand is immediate. This is a good spot. This is a really nice spot. We got stone right here. We've got uh, trees and or farmland. I'm assuming this is probably for our trees. This might be farmland. Um, we've got more soil or turf here. Soil here. A little bit of rock here. The access to the sand is really good to be able to make. Um, be able to make the roads that you're going to need because once you get roads you can start constraining like putting fences along the roads get your bots to use the roads and getting them around covering some of these longer distances is not going to be a problem like getting over here oh this is more stone but getting them over here to like the trace metal deposits or somewhere else on the map um is not going to be nearly as difficult and you don't need a lot of stone you don't need a lot of clay like there's access to clay right here so this is a really good start as long as the map shape is like it is you're fine don't click on the map unless you want to regenerate what the, the the resources are your trees and stuff like that the major features aren't going to change but where your clay and where your stone and where your um, trace metal ore and all that kind of stuff is will so it doesn't matter if you land here or if you land over here or wherever. It's not that hard to cover the distance on the map. You see, you have the map. You can see what's on the map. You can see where to get to the items. You don't have to be right next to where you land. So bear that in mind as you're picking some stuff. I'm going to go ahead and land here. And then I'm going to cover some early game tips. How I get started and what I'm looking at. So this is tip number three, and that is how to build a, an efficient tree farm. So I sort of covered this in my um, tutorial video on bot programming, but I wanted to kind of cover this explicitly here because it is very handy. And I'm sure I'm not the first person to figure this out. By I, I definitely, definitely am not the first person to figure this out. But you can actually make very dense tree farms and you just have to approach it a little bit differently. So instead of like making a, a big max, di or max diameter tree farm over there or something like that, I can just make like uh, in a seven by seven area using four three by three blocks, I can make a really substantial, um, highly productive, very efficient farm. So first thing I'm gonna do, and I am in creative mode so I can just spawn in some stuff. So I'm gonna make a workbench but you would just gather up your logs and your sticks and go ahead and get started there. Oops. And I need to make a spade. And so I, I want to want my tree farm. So I've got my stone is right here. It could be a little closer. I've got one world that was just perfect where there was actually the stone was right on top of the tree farm and uh, right on top of the sand, like everything clay, like everything within like two grids of each other. It was awesome. But um, what I'm going to do here is probably pick just a central area. And I'm going to make myself a shovel. Actually, I'll go ahead and just give myself a metal shovel because I'm in creative mode. Uh, there we go, metal spade. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick um, a nice broad area here. And I'm going to pick, and hopefully this digs faster. It does. So I'm just going to dig one full 3x3, three three, and then I'm going to mark off the corners of the other area just for demonstration purposes. And actually, I'm just going to go ahead and dig it out, and then I will pause and come back when I am ready to proceed. And I apologize for the quick jump here. Uh, I'm still getting used to the new features of OBS, which I got to figure out how to do transitions when I'm pausing. 
But anyhow, I am back. So this is in general. Now, you're not probably going to build all the fence and everything to start. This is and all of these containers and all that stuff. You're just going to worry about getting these dug like this. I went ahead and put some road down just to show you what this is going to look like. And um, basically at this point, once you have these dug, um, I can program my bots uh, to... Uh, we're going to go ahead and clear this. And let's program him to go ahead and take from there uh, until his hands are full. And then he's going to plant in here. Until his hands are empty. And we're in that same area, so that's fine. And we'll just loop that. Go. Now I've got to make sure I've got enough acorns for him. So he'll go ahead and plant these. Now when you're using the creative interface, say if you want to test stuff out, if you hold shift when you open the creative menu, you're going to give yourself uh, your max holding capacity of that item. Oops. You just hit it once, you're just getting a one. But he's going to plant these and then you can, once these are grown, which I will take a brief pause and wait until they're grown, and you can see where you'll have to chop them all down uh, individually, but once uh, once they're chopped down, you can then program a planter or a digger to come in and just dig up the stumps that these leave behind. And you're always going to maintain this density. You don't have to worry about the coordinates um, or anything like that being in the right spots. Like, okay, see, so the, the diggers would normally dig here and here and here. They'd skip all these other ones. You don't have to worry about that. And that's the wonderful thing about this kind of farm. Now, I also then, I want to put, I put fences around it so that it keeps the gathering, keeps things, the tree limbs or the, the, the logs and everything will fall within the farm. I put some gates on each one of these pathways, and I just run road through them. So as they're running through, they're going to the, hit the track and be faster. Uh, I usually keep acorns and sticks right by here. I would probably set up my tool creation either here or over here since I've got the stone right here. Maybe even just like at this intersection or something like that. So that's what I'm going to kind of build up and that is how we're going to progress. So hold on a moment while I grow some trees and get some uh, stumps and we will do the final steps of building your tree farm. And we're back. And again, apologies for the, ju uh, the jump cut. But, uh, oops, not what I want to do. Um, but we are now ready to go. So uh, what we can do is we've got my bot. He's got a shovel. I'm going to go ahead and program the bot. And I'm just going to go and move to a tree stump. So instead of normally you would use just move to a, a piece of uh, dirt, I'm going to move to a tree stump. I'm going to use the tool. And then I would have a, a condition after this where I would do this until his hands are empty and he's going to go get another tool. But for the moment, this is fine just to demonstrate the purpose. So he's just going to keep digging up tree stumps and then you can have your planters planting. So, and you can see he's, he's digging them in much more dense than otherwise would. So this gives you your dense tree farm, your three by three. Um, and, I, and the nice thing about this too is if you need to expand, it's really easy just to add another three by three here or here or, or wherever. You can build these in small individuals. I mean, you can build them as, as big or small as you need to. They're expandable and you can kind of control, like you don't want to have too many logs coming through or, or you can kind of spread your, your logs and your wooden materials out over your your base um, coming from different places. So this lets you control the flow of, of uh, logs and stuff like that. Um, so that's definitely helpful as well because uh, you don't want to have overflow, too much overflow anyways, of your logs or any of your other materials. So uh, that is the 3x3 farm. 
So the next thing is roads and fences. So your roads here, you're, you are definitely going to run and your bots are going to run faster on the roads. But pathfinding doesn't really follow the roads like, like so. But say I, I need to go, okay, yeah, it's, pathfinding is really kind of dumb in this game. Um, but say I want to go here, it's going to follow the road because I put the fences up along the road. So you want to channel and control where your bots can go, force them. I mean, you'll end up putting a lot of gates around, or a lot of fences around, because that's going to allow you to funnel like that. That's the reason that I have this fully fenced in is now any point they leave, they're leaving on a road. They may not ultimately stay on a road, but uh, what I would eventually do or what I would probably do is move this stuff slightly off, fence this stuff in. So anybody that's moving from these main work points is going to be funneled through a road. Uh, next, uh, the next tip is going to be uh, around some programming. So I'm going to pause, get things set up and get ready to begin from there. <laughs> 